What's up guys, welcome to this week's lesson. So, before we get started, let me say a few things. Um, I'm thinking about making this lesson public because just make it available to the people who come to my channel who are not premium subscribers. They can get an idea of some of the stuff, the material we learn about in the premium um, section. And this is more of a, a kind of more of a lesson where it's broken up into kind of a lecture, a theory, uh, kind of lecture plus some playing at the end. I, I, not all my lessons are like this, but when I'm talking about stuff with respect to, you know, that I think is best explained through some theoretical concept, then I'll, I'll typically work off of my um, computer desktop this way. So in this lesson we're going to talk about country guitar theory, and um, I'll come back to that in a second. But uh, also, we've been having horrible storms in the southeast and ice storms, so, you know, uh, power's been on and off, internet's been on and off. I don't know how far I'll be able to get in this, so short story is this may be a short lesson. Um, I apologize for that. Also, let's see. Well, I think that's about it. So, we're talking about country guitar theory. Really, I don't know if there is such a thing. Really, um, uh, you could probably encapsulate everything, just guitar theory itself. But um, there's a lot that goes into playing country guitar, not just... Um, the notes you're playing, scales and things like that. You know, there's all there's tone, there's phrasing, there's styles, there's there's you know the type of guitar you play, the way you play, hybrid picking, thumb pick, etc. And all of those things are different, separate branches of what we you know need to want to look at eventually. But as far as the notes themselves, you know, a lot of people want to want to are quick to want to learn a a scale. You know, teach me a country guitar scale. And unfortunately, there really isn't one in my opinion. So, uh, in fact, I don't like teaching scales at all or modes or anything like that. I just like to look at everything with respect to the major and minor blues. And this was something that was really taught to me through a, a jazz teacher that I taught, I took from one time. He, so the concept does not apply strictly to country. You can really look at anything uh, when you look at the major and the minor blues together. So you'll see me teaching this way a lot. So if we're um if we if we have a well let me get my pen right uh, if we have a one four five chord progression let's just say we're in G and you know most of your pop country stuff is gonna have this type of type of progression uh, very simple very basic not very not 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 difficult at all so we would have something like uh, one, four, five, and this means that if we were in the key of G, we would be our one chord would be a G, our four chord would be our C, and our five chord would be our D. For some reason, I feel like I got the wrong pin. Oh yeah, hold on a minute. Um, I did. So, we, we, we have two choices here. We could, we could, one, we could play through our changes. We could create a solo that plays through the chord changes, meaning that uh, we, we change what we're playing, our lick, with respect to every time we change a chord. So, if we play over the G, if we're going to play a G lick, we go to the C, we play a, a lick in C, and so on, so on and so forth. And this makes our solo a little bit more or our lead a little bit more interesting in my opinion or we could play where we have no changes in other words uh, we're, we're um, we stick to a scale we might play G major uh, we could play G uh, G blues the entire thing whether we use major or minor uh, we could use a, a mode in G if we wanted to do that um, G pentatonic so Throughout the entire chord progression, we just stick to a G, G, some type of G scale. The difference, though, when we play with the changes, though, is we get, um, we get, our licks can stand alone. Let me let me put it this way. This is what I like about playing this way, and it really kind of comes back from a jazz type of play. In other words, if you take out the backing track, if you take out the the backup altogether you can still hear the chord changes through your licks, through your solo. Uh, sometimes it comes out of a uh, 
kind of comes from that walking baseline type of feel. We'll look at examples of this in a second. This, this is what we kind of want to want to think of. So when we're playing with our changes, we're we're really we're thinking not not always thinking with respect to our key center or the key of G. We're always thinking with respect to the chord we're playing over. And when we change with the chord, we get a little bit more interesting sounds in our licks. You take away the backing track, you can still hear the changes of the chords through our through our solo itself. And depending on how we orchestrate that solo, like I said, um, if it's kind of a walking bass line thing, you can still hear the chord changes. If it's kind of like a chord melody, or if it's more of a you know a honky tonk type of lick, we can still hear that. And that's what we're going to talk about in this. Um, later on in this video. So, we're, and I'm going to show you some stuff in G. We're, we're going to start out in G, uh, looking at the G major and minor blues, and over here to the right, uh, left again, if I derive my major scale in G, remember, I've got a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then I'll have another half step to my to my major, I mean to my G note again. So we're just going to drop these notes straight down. We're deriving our major scale here. Um, and I just want to, you'll see me do this. I do it quite often just to kind of get it in your head. Try to derive everything from a chromatic, right? So we drop these notes down. G now becomes our one note. A becomes our two. B becomes our three, four, D becomes 5, E becomes 6, F sharp becomes 7, and every time we're talking to something with respect to like a flat third, we're talking, we're flatting back that B to an A sharp. Okay? Kind of important to understand that to follow along with the, the blue stuff. Now, down here below, I've got two blue shapes. Uh, one is the major blues, so we'll say this one's a major. Major blues, and this one's minor blues. And they're kind of in the same position, relatively the same. So major blues will follow the pattern of a one. So uh, it's a one. We're going to play the two note. We're going to play the flat third, the third, the f uh, let's see, the the fifth, and then the sixth. And this is going to start over again. So it's a six-note scale. The minor blues is a one, flat third, four, sharp four, or flat five, five, and then flat seven. And I want to talk about why one, why we typically choose the minor blues over the major blues. But if we do this in the key of G, then this is going to be our third fret, sixth string, first string, and this would be our third fret, sixth string, first string. Okay, so all right, go back to our one four five chord progression. Look at look at our notes. We're gonna we're going of course we're going from a G to a C and then to a D. Well so we're going from a one, four and five. You notice in our major blues there is there's the one and there's the five, but there is no four, right? But if you go over to our minor blues You've got, you've got the one, four, and the five. And in my opinion, that's why we like the sound of the minor blues a lot better. Because when we make that change to that four chord, that C or that four note is in our scale, so we can, we can always resolve back to it or start a lick there or what have you. Um, a lot of times, you, your minor blues can stand alone by itself over a one, four, five chord progression. But if you ever try to just play something out of the major blues over a one four five chord progression, it starts. It doesn't. It, it sounds almost like a pentatonic scale. It doesn't always work. Now, if you make a, I mean, it works, but it doesn't always, you know, flow through the chord changes. If you if you stick with a lick like just a just a regular country lick based off the major blues, and you do it over and over, just a standalone standard lick, it'll work. But a lot of times when you're just jamming the minor blues just always feels better and so that's why we always choose it. The problem is 
in country, we're not just sticking to notes out of the minor and uh, the major and the minor blues. We're actually converging these two scales together. We're playing licks out of both of them. So we're kind of transposing them right on top of one another. And what ends up happening is it's these chromatics right in here that we see. Right here. I don't know if that'll show up, but going from the flat third, the third to, I'm sorry, the two, the flat third, and the third in the major scale. And then going from the four, sharp four, to the five in the minor scale. Uh, we really heavily rely on those notes. But also, it's very common for us to to uh, to start a lick with uh let's let's just let me write it over here um you uh, you know we'll start with a flat third going to a third over to the root uh that's very common that's going to come out of your 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 major your major blues and then uh, bouncing off of something let's say like we pick off from the one to the flat seven back to the five and then start it all over again that's your coming from your minor blues so in country we like to merge these two things together and that's really what gives us that honky tonk kind of sound and so we're going to talk about it I'm going to show you what I mean by this in a second and and I'll show you some licks let me check my time on this but um if we merged all of this together this comes out to be a really long I don't know that I would necessarily uh, practice it this way but um for the sake of just visualizing it, really what we want, to, what we're doing is we're we're just not transposing those notes right on top of one another, the two scales, and you get a very long. The biggest thing is you get this very long chromatic uh, movement between your your two, your two, your flat third, your third, your four, your sharp four, and then your five, and you got, you know, we don't we don't always play it that way, but you've got those sequence of notes in there that basically almost allow you to, for and then you know, uh, it's almost like a an entire chromatic no, uh, scale itself. When you merge all these notes together, the only thing we'd be leaving out would be the major seventh. Well, there'd be a couple. I see, we have, I think we have flat six, major seventh, and I want to say like a flat two. Yeah, so there's three notes we'd be leaving out, but um. So, w w this is something that, you know, takes a long time to sort of get in your head. It's not something, you know, you would expect to memorize all in one setting. And it's very hard to visualize it just looking at it on a, on a you know, in theory. It's much easier if you get the guitar in your hand and, and then see what you're playing. So, we, you know, I just wanted to show you this. We'll probably have to step back, you know, especially for those who are beginners. We'd need to step back and learn the scales themselves and spend more time looking at what we're doing but if you wanted to practice these two on your own you already you probably already know them and let me just jump over to the guitar and show you uh, what it is but how we can take a lick based off the major minor blues scale and then move it with our chord changes and you can you can hear the melody you can hear the chord changes going on in the background and you can hear what makes these licks honky tonk sort of sounding country sounding that apply to a lot of what we're playing. We'll see it over and over again. So let me jump over the guitar and show you some stuff. 